So I just want to thank you for having me. Uh, we have been in San Jose studying instant runoff voting, or also known as ranked choice voting, for about three years. And if you know anything about this topic, you will know this one thing. Things change almost on a daily basis. So hopefully today's presentation will be a nice culmination of information that we've been gathering over the last couple of years. All right, so the basic concept is, in instant runoff voting or ranked choice voting, is that voters rank candidates in order of preference. Okay? The, the concept behind this is to eliminate the need for runoffs. And in San Jose, we have runoffs quite frequently. San Francisco is currently the only state, uh, the only city in California that is conducting instant runoff. They've done five or six elections. Um, others will be doing so very soon, as I just mentioned, um, Alameda County. Uh, also, in addition to San Francisco, these three cities, as I mentioned, will be doing it soon, but also Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Tacoma Park, Maryland. Now, there were a number of other communities that were doing instant runoff voting in the last decade or so, and some of them have repealed instant runoff voting or they've stopped using it. So Burlington, Vermont, I'm going to flip through these real quick and then I'm going to go back over to my notes because I want to give you a little more information here. Okay, so Burlington, Vermont, Pierce County, Washington, Aspen, Colorado, Cary, North Carolina, and Ann Arbor, Michigan. Now you have, um, you have a letter in your handouts um, from Barbara Johnson from Minneapolis, Minnesota. And this letter is actually a, an email that was sent to me earlier this year in May. And uh, Barbara Johnson is the council president for the Minneapolis City Council. And so she wrote to me to talk a little bit about voter turnout and some of the costs and some of the issues that uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota was facing when they did their instant runoff voting. Um, and I'm just going to paraphrase real quickly. Voter turnout was the worst in nearly 100 years. Uh, the process cost them way more than they thought it would. Debates between the candidates were not typical, um, the kind of debates that typically you would see. Uh, too many candidates um, were, were uh, strategizing regarding the instant runoff voting as opposed to really dealing with the issues. She said older voters were more confused and that there was no evidence that underrepresented communi communities participated at greater rates. She finally said, unless the state changes their type of election, we will have two kinds of voting again, confusing for the voter, especially elder ones. Then there's also a, a letter from the uh, former uh, Secretary of State candidate in the state of Vermont who said that simply stated instant runoff voting eliminates bottom candidates until only two are left which is the same as a runoff however what happens is is the winner of that contest is guaranteed to have a majority as long as there is not a tie so to make sure your ballot is considered in the end you have to rank every candidate even ones you really don't want and only 20% of Aspen, Aspen voters did that so sometimes a simple majority isn't so simple. Now in Aspen, Colorado, um, they, um, let's see, make sure I get my notes right here. Um, let me take that back. In North, uh, Cary, North Carolina, they did instant runoff voting um, as a pilot and they used it only once, but they haven't decided whether or not they want to continue to use it or not. Uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, was one of the first in the decade to use it. They formally repealed it, and they were the first in this decade to use it, and they were first to repeal it. You also have a letter from Councilmember Dwayne Romero from Aspen. I won't um, read that one, but I will also let you know that he was one of the, the top proponents for instant runoff voting in Aspen, Colorado. But after experimenting with it, he now wants the council uh, to quit using it. So. Let's talk a little bit more about what's happening in our own state. So Alameda County, as I mentioned, uh, Berkeley adopted instant runoff voting in 2004. This was a voter-initiated measure. 
And Oakland adopted also a voter-initiated measure in 2006. Then San Leandro City Council adopted this in 2010. So for the first time ever, um, these three cities are going to conduct an instant runoff vote. Um, one and a half million dollars between the three cities will be spent to educate voters on this concept. And they've estimated that this will require an additional 3,000, sorry, $300,000 of ongoing costs. Now, maybe that's okay, maybe not. You know, cost isn't the only thing we need to consider when we're conducting an election, right? So we're gonna talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of instant runoff voting. And I had intended to show you a really great video, and then I learned that I can't get internet access up here today. So, but this is the website, and I also want to now call your attention to a brochure that you have in your packet. In Alameda County, the registrar voters, working with the three cities, developed a very, very extensive voter outreach education program. They have a wonderful website. They are doing lots of webinars and lots of community events, and their slogan is Voting Made Easy. So if you look at the, the brochure, it gives a nice definition. What is ranked choice voting? Ranked choice voting allows voters to rank a first, second, and third candidate for a single election. This makes it possible to elect local officials by majority vote without the need of a separate runoff. Now here in San Jose, how would that affect the city? Call out, what do you think? What do you think about runoff elections? Save us from another vote, another trip out to the polls. So it would save us for another trip out to the polls, save the city some expenses. Yeah, so the question is, will it save city expenses? That's a really good question. I'm not convinced, but I'm not done studying the issue. Right. Um, now here in San Jose, our charter requires that a candidate receive a majority of the vote, so 50% plus one. Now in the communities of Berkeley, their threshold is 40%. So majority, uh, to, to become elected in Berkeley or Oakland is you must receive 40% or more of the votes. Yes, ma'am. Great question, everybody hear that? So in a runoff, are, are we seeing that we have a greater turnout at the, at the runoff? Here in San Jose, the answer is yes, and I'll tell you why. It's because we do our primary in June, and we do our runoff in November, concurrent with the presidential or other statewide races, um, governor's race, et cetera. So we see a greater turnout in November than we do in June. And so the theory behind instant runoff voting is let's set that election date for the date that we know we have the highest voter turnout. So in the case of San Jose, instead of having a primary in June, we, if we were to move to instant runoff voting, we would have that election in November in the, in the even number of years. So more money would have to be raised for campaigns because if there's five candidates running for one seat in November, the primary would knock off the undesirables would say so the top two would be fighting each other so the, all five candidates would be much more actively fundraising than campaigning for the November one right everybody hear that so much more can uh, if say you have five candidates in an instant runoff election and so they're all out there campaigning and fundraising so everybody be out there and tapping the same voters looking for fundraising looking for donations for a longer time period Quite possibly. Yes? Have, uh, we calculated the costs to our own uh, county to the registrar of voters itself. Absolutely. So we'll get to a slide where we're going to talk about that. So that's, that, that is definitely a factor. Now, and I know that you as the league, your, your main focus is educating voters. And I understand that although you may be sensitive to the fact that elections are expensive or can be expensive, but I don't believe that's the league's primary function. Um, but voter outreach and education, 
particularly for a new form of voting, that's where the league certainly can have a leadership opportunity and a leadership role in communities to help educate and inform our voters. Because instant runoff voting is a completely different way of voting, different than people are accustomed to. And well, I'm going to even give you a, a little uh, demonstration of that. So since I wasn't able to have this really cool video, which if you have internet access at home, I would really encourage you, and this is in your PowerPoint um, slide handout, so you can go and take a look at the Alameda County uh, website, as well as the San Francisco's um, elections or ethics commission's website. They have a pretty good um, uh, flash uh, demonstration as well. So if you go to the, the back side of your brochure, you will see an example of what a ballot would look like if it came to your home and you were going to participate in an instant runoff vote in San Jose. So you see that you have a, a group of candidates, all the same names. You see there Eleanor Roosevelt, Booker T. Washington, so forth. But you have a first, a second, and a third choice. And so right now, you know, when you get your ballot or when you go to the precinct to vote, you've got one ballot and you're choosing one, one candidate. So this allows the voter to choose a first, a second, and a third preference. And then the counting is done later here in San Jose, um, in Santa Clara County. The voting, uh, the counting could not be done at the precinct. It, it will have to be done um, at headquarters. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how the, uh, the votes are calculated. So, let me put that down. And I will, I, I will mention to you at this point, and, and again, apologize for not having this video, but I did take a look this morning to see at the number of views of just just one of the videos, which I thought was a, a, an excellent one. It was a little more than four minutes long, um, but it was, it was, it was uh, very lively, it was very informative, it was clear, it was easy to understand in English. Now, I don't speak Spanish or Tagalog or Chinese or uh, Vietnamese, but um, I did take a look at the uh, number of times the Spanish version of the video had been viewed since August, and it was 23, 23 times. Now, I don't know about you, but I was, I'm kind of disappointed about that. But, you know, nonetheless, they, the Alameda County Registrar Voters and the city clerks for those three cities are doing a whole lot of outreach. And so they're doing other things besides relying on, on the website. Because we all know not everybody has access to a computer. And even if they do, not everybody really likes doing research on computers or really spends that much time on a computer. Now, Santa Clara County is unique because we have the five languages. So one of the you know one of the challenges that San Jose um, will have if if the council wanted to go to instant runoff voting is is we have five languages that we need to um, consider when we're doing any kind of e education and outreach efforts. So we have five languages. I'm trying to imagine it where mm -hmm. you're voting for your your governor. In my case, hopefully you vote for my lieutenant governor Maldonado. Um, I work for him. So, <laughs> but in other cases, so, but that's one. Oh, excellent point. Excellent point. And, and it's, again, it's buried somewhere later in the presentation, but it is an excellent point because, okay, Santa Clara County, we, we know that we're going to have a ballot for governor and for all the state propositions, and then we have the county um, races as well. So that would be one ballot. And if we're San Jose voters now, um, and we've got instant runoff for, let's say, our mayor, we're going to have a separate ballot and a separate methodology for voting. So that, that's, it's, that's clearly one of the considerations that we need to think about. So you vote your traditional way on your governor, your, your gubernatorial, your state propositions, your county measures, your school districts or other spe special districts, and then you're gonna have a whole different ballot and a different methodology for voting for your instant runoff elections.